Hello everyone, I just wanted to record this quick video about an HCA that I created. This HCA helps us to export characters for a real engine, fixing different transforms for the skeletons and also creating good naming conventions for Unreal. To show how it works, I imported a character that I created and here we would basically now get HCA, which is named Unreal Engine 5 FPX character output. And this is the HDA. It basically will contain different paths and names that allows us to create a good naming for the assets. We can just plug in the character, which is this one. And you can see that I also have animation from Houdini. And this is a preview of how it looks uh, in Houdini with the deformations. And if you preview these assets, you will see that this HDA, excuse me, you will see that the character became really big and the reason is that in Unreal the scale and the units are different so one unit of Houdini is 100 for Unreal and this is what the HCA will do and the way it works is that you have uh, two actions you can create a character output which will have this pink color like the skeletal mesh for Unreal it will contain the mesh and the skeleton and if you want to import export animations, you can do the same by exporting the animations here. For a quick overview of what this HCA does, you can see that you can set a path just like you would do in a normal output for a character or any FVX file. And here you will set your main path and you can also use subfolders. These subfolders are really useful if you want to use tops. And here at the bottom where you see this grayed out string, here you see the final string of our uh, naming convention. So here you can see that will be uh, heap characters slash zero zero. So if I untick the subfolders, you see that the zero zero number disappears. And this will trigger every time we export the character output. And the character output, the final output uh, FBX file, gets that grayed out string to name the character. So you can see here that it will create the proper uh, path and the file. You can also set the subfolders as a wedge attribute if you're using tops you could say by type or you could export your characters by whatever attribute you would like and there is also the naming i added the append date because when i use unreal sometimes it's nice to have a date after the asset so i can know when it was created but it also then it doesn't overwrite the same character if i did a few changes so here you can tick or untick the date if you need it in the name character you can see that it has the prefix this is the prefixes that unreal uses for the asset naming conventions and it's relatively useful you can change it for whatever you need so you could say your prefix would be skeletal mesh so you can read it better and you will see that it will change the output final name and of course you can name your character you can say that your character could be called as far as I'm concerned, John, right? So here you have different <laughs> types of namings and the same will go for the animation. You can name your animations. You could also set a wedge attribute here and it would also get it. So that's up to you. In this case, it's an animation for walking and you can also append a character name in the animation. And this could be done if the skeletal mesh is not changing and you have multiple animations for the same character. And that goes back to as well to the skeleton. You can have a name for the skeleton, which sometimes will be useful. So if the, your skeleton doesn't change, but your character changes, you have a same name in convention and it will append it between the name and the prefix. So here, I'm just gonna set it back to its uh, prefix normal then you also have the rock parameters here is the convert units and the smoothing groups are off here what it will do is to change these values so when you create the character output it will use these values ticked or unticked and it will set them here so if you would like i'm going to delete this now so if you would like the opposite you can then create it and you will have here the convert units on and the smoothing groups off the reason and the defaults of this HCA is that the, what I do inside here, these transforms will be really useful to have these convert units off, but it basically gives you the option to do whatever you want with it. 
And lastly, you have the specific character or animation output settings. So I'm going to create them again. And here, sometimes you would like to have the character only to render the current frame because I don't want to store animations in this one. So that's set here. And the animation to use the clip detail attribute. And that's also set here. It depends how you want it. You can also export animations within your skeletal mesh, but I wouldn't recommend that because it's nicer to have a specific output for animations, which will be a bit handier for using tops later on. And after you are done with your naming and everything else, you can just come to the drop output and you can just save it. And the same for here. In this case, I think I don't have it connected, so I should connect it the animation to the character output and now it will be saved. Just to show how you would import it into Unreal then you can get your output which would be this skeletal mesh on. You can just drop it in Unreal. And I would just reset to defaults. Just don't import animations for the skeletal mesh. Import all. And you will see that it appears directly without much errors. Then you can just have it here. And for the animation you can do the same. You can bring it here and you will see that directly it will detect that it's from the skeleton John and also just leave it as it is and then you can import it and you can put it here as well. If you simulate, you will see that the animations work correctly. If you would like to download this HDA, there is a link in the description. And if you would like to follow the course for doing these procedural characters, I also have the link for that. And it includes this HDA as well. So for a little bit more money, we can get both the course and the HDA together. And if you are not interested in the course, you can just get the HDA if you need. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao, ciao.